Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Earrings Off. We want to invite you to subscribe, rate, and leave us a review. You can find us on Facebook at Earrings Off Podcast and on Instagram at The Earrings Off Podcast. Welcome to Earrings Off. I'm Lou. And I'm Teresa. Let's get started. Well, hello. Hi there. How are you, my friend? I am doing well. Well, good, good, good. In spite of the the time change. <laughs> no, right? I I was fine on uh, the first day, but I have just been so sleepy. Is that what you're experiencing? Um, I'm not sleepy as much as I am off. I'm just a bit off right. because right, right, right. I'm thinking like right now my body is like, oh, it's, in a, whole, it's a whole hour later. Like it's nine o'clock. It's time to be preparing for bed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll adjust. I'm sure we're okay. in the land of the living. So we're, we're still good. We're still yeah, good. Yeah. Woo woo. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. So it's Women's History Month. And um, that works for us because we're all about women every day, all day. So um, this is a, a good way, um, a good time of the year for us because we can celebrate that. And we can celebrate the vital role women play in history. So we're going to try and set the mood here at uh, Earrings Off by starting with some Quotes. And now remember, Fireside is an interactive platform. We invite you when we, Teresa and I are going to go back and forth answering some questions. But if you want to jump in on the conversation and share your thoughts about different women in your lives, we certainly ask that you do that. So um, heading off, this is a quote by former First Lady Michelle Obama. There's no limit to what we as women can accomplish. Mm. Mm -hmm. So do you buy into that one or what do you, what do you feel about that quote? Yeah, I, I like it. I, I, I like love it too. Yeah, I love yeah, yeah. I, it. I like it. Yeah, yeah. So it's so inspiring. You know, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I saw something in the news. I saw something on the feed where this teacher was saying that she got an email from a parent and she had some trepidation about opening it because, you know, she thought it was going to be something about her teaching or some complaint, something she'd done. And she said when she opened it up, she um, I think there was a message. The parent said that she took her daughter and some friends who were in this teacher's class to the movies and the girls were talking about how this teacher inspired them, made them feel good about themselves and just encouraged them. And she said that just made her weak. So yeah, Aww. I, I love yeah. it when we remind um, girls and women that you can accomplish what you want to do that's, without that's, limits. So yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, each time a woman stands up for herself, possibly without claiming she stands for all women, my Angelo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a that's a good one too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Because you know, it's not just about you when you um, take a stand or when you are pioneer and try to blaze some trails. Um, yeah, that's right. yeah. You're making it easier for the next folks and making it possible for the next group of people. So, yeah, mm -hmm, I like that. Uh, I love this next one, ne this next one by late Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. My mother told me to be a lady and for her, that meant to be your own person, be independent. Yeah, yeah. Because, nice. yeah, many times we've been told being a lady is to be quiet and to 
demure to the men and not have an opinion. But uh, yeah, I like yeah, I like, that I like it. Mm -hmm. Well, this next one comes from a young lady. I raise my voice not so I can shout, but so that those without a voice can be heard. We cannot su we cannot succeed when half of us are held back. Malala Yousafzai. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So this next segment, Lou, we're going to get into that. Those questions you said you were talking about earlier about them being possibly being interactive. So if anybody wants to join in and share something, then please do. We encourage it because, yeah. you know, it is an interactive platform. Yeah. I want to start by asking you, Lou, to name one woman you are grateful is in or was in your life. Okay. Um, well, and these questions, of course, come from longwalks.com. So we want, if you're interested in seeing them, uh, please go to their site. But, uh, of course, you know, you have to start with your mom. I don't care what happens. So want to give deference to her, acknowledge her for all of her wonderful things, my mom. But um, when, when th this is a hard one, when you talk about naming a woman that you're grateful for, that's been in your life or was in your life. But uh, I, I've had so many amazing women uh, pour into me and role model for me. But the two that readily come to mind, and I, I think about, you know, for me, the workplace and the career. And uh, I, I learned a lot about my management style from two tough female directors. One was... Uh, Muriel Felder, my former director of social work. And uh, I met her on my first job, fresh out of graduate school. And she hired me uh, to be the chief social worker. And I led the uh, a large team of social workers. And I was actually the youngest one on the team. And the other is Edna, Edna Keys Chavis, who was um, the city clerk for the city of Richmond. And, and hired me as a deputy. And what, what um, I guess what I'm grateful for, for them, from them was that they were, both of them were the first women of color to hold their respective positions. Nice. And they each had very high standards. They were very good at their jobs. And um, they they were the kinds of managers who could, hold their own in high level meetings, but they could jump right in and do any job that was required, any task that was required uh, in their area. And they were, they were very, very smart women. And they were the kind of women, woman that would let you know they were rooting for you. But uh, they also, they didn't let me off the hook when I screwed up. You know, I get called into the office and we'd have a conversation, but they were kind enough to walk me through the steps so that I understood, you know, okay, this is, this is where the misstep was made. And so you learn from that and it was a safe environment. Both of them were safe environments for, for um, them to learn and for me to learn. And um, I can share a story about Edna because Edna actually survived a very abusive marriage. She left with um, just the clothes on her back and her daughter. Wow. And I can share this because she shared this publicly when she was awarded some honor. And um, she started at the bottom and rose up through the ranks. So um, through Edna particularly, I learned uh, about um, how you can persevere and you can overcome. And uh, so those were just two women that I've been, I was just blessed to know and be mentored by. So what about you? Who are you grateful for having in your you life know, or that you've had in your life? So uh, a lot simpler than that. I mean, those were amazing. Um, that was amazing. Well, it's an hour amazing. show, Teresa. It's an hour. <laughs> I'm just saying. Okay. <laughs> but I, I said, of course, my mom and, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah, I haven't, I haven't been, I have had some women to come into my life and my recently in my career, but early on, 
um, it's always been all men. So yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, because yeah. of the field that I'm in or whatever. But um, yeah. but yeah, it's 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 it was my mom. Yeah, yeah. That was it, yeah. and uh, for yeah. for all the obvious reasons, you know, yeah. Yeah. just her grace and her support, no matter what. Uh, yeah. And um, so it was just that one little simple. I, I have, I, I know that it's an hour show and I have more to say in, on some of the others. Okay. <laughs> let's hope you do, folks. Let's hope so, folks, because uh, <laughs> I want you to just witness firsthand what I'm dealing with. We have an hour <laughs> show and Teresa's answer to the first yes, question mind. was maybe a minute, but here we go. Not even a we, minute. Yo, not even a minute, but don't don't worry about it, folks. We, we're moving right ahead. Okay. All right. So, Teresa, we're going to start this next one with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Name, you got something on that? A little bit, just okay. a little. Okay. All right. Here we go. Lord help us. Yeah. Name <laughs> one woman whose style you like. It can be her fashion style or something about the way she carries herself. So, was that your mom too? No, no, I didn't. I could have used her for all of them, but yeah, no, I didn't. I took, I didn't do that. No, it wasn't. You know, I was. I'm talking about. Um, so there isn't just one person because my style that I like, the style that I like is more classic. Yeah, you know, timeless classic. Right. Yeah. So I see it in many women. Okay. Sometimes, depending on the circumstance and the situation. Like Carrie Carrie Washington. Um Okay. Even some of Michelle Obama. Not all, because she's pretty trendy. Yeah. You know. But she has some she I have seen her in some like the piece that the, of her at the White House right now that that photographer that yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, that artist painted rendered of her that that style is is classic but you know i'm basically the the style that i have is basically neutral black and simple okay. so it's hard to think of just one person who has the same kind of style but i see it in many women that that yeah. are like many many movie stars and like on the red carpet you see some of the women who wear the traditional um yeah. you know style but i don't have just one woman okay. but i see it quite often in carrie washington okay mm -hmm. well um it can be a fashion style or just something about the way she carries herself you know so oh, I what I, I, I think you pointed it out well, well, that that's why I did, but help us, Lord. But anyway, <laughs> but I can still say that about Carrie yeah. Washington too. Yeah, oh, yeah, so yeah she yeah. carries herself very well. Yeah. So I named uh, the person she's married to the forty fourth president of the U.S. You referenced her as well, um, President Barack Obama. My person that I just I liked the way she carries herself is First Lady Michelle Obama. She's very smart. She has a lot of grace, but yet she's kind and humble. She represented Black women so well in her role as First Lady. Really, she represented all women well. Her fashion style, of course, is on point, but you know that's not my thing, so don't know much yeah. of that about that. She's clean. She looks good. Those are my standards. I love her <laughs> because she set an example of health for the community, telling us all to eat better and to exercise and to take better care of ourselves. And she has the right mix to me of being a strong, intelligent woman, but also knows how to show her love and support for her, her husband in a way that honors his strength and her strength. They are a team, they conduct themselves like that. And when a woman figures out how to walk that type of walk, to be strong, but also be soft with her, her husband, her man, nothing can stop her. And Michelle Obama, she has taught a master's class in how to do that. So I just admire the way she carries herself. Yeah, that's yeah. that's amazing, Lou. I can tell you right now, I have, I'm receiving a failing grade on this exercise. <laughs> 
No, you're not. No, you're not. Thank you. Thank you for carrying me, my not, friend. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. I th- I well, you know what? You know, you and I have a rule. We don't talk about this before the show. <laughs> so so we can be fresh. We'll have to revisit that rule. <laughs> so, it's all good. It's all good. Okay. All right. So it's, you, you know, it's an hour show. Just let that be your uh, guide from now on. Okay. I'm just saying. Okay. 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 So name one of your favorite female celebrities or your favorite female historical figure. Okay. I actually named, I named a celebrity and I named uh, a historical. Look at you. See, you're yeah. one of those. And let me tell you what I did. Because the celebrity I, I named, I did not want the folks coming after me because she's white. And I don't want people saying, she could have named him. Yes, I could have. But Teresa asked me the question. So I chose the celebrity I wanted to name. Uh, and that is um, Meryl Streep. Oh, yeah. I, I tell you, um, we celebrate all women here, black, white, brown, young, old, all ethnic, all ethnicity. So if somebody's got it twisted that we can only cite black women, that's their issue. It's not ours. So that's them. Anyway, I'm going back to Meryl Streep. I've always been such a big fan of hers. Um, I like her too. Her her acting is just, I mean, it's just amazing how she draws you in. And before you know it, you feel like you're there. Like you're part of this story as it's unfolding. So I loved her in so many movies, but... Um, the Deer Hunter, The Devil Wears Prada, I love that. Out of Africa, The Bridges of Madison County with Clint Eastwood. I- I'm telling you, I just, I love her acting style. And I gained even more respect for her when President, former President Trump came after her. And her response to him was just delivered in such a, a classy way. But she, um, the way that she responded was just it was civil but it was profound so what did he yes, say about her i didn't know about well that. he was talking about her basically saying something like you know she was not important or you know oh something stupid yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um she and i you know he was just not a fan because she was challenging him and the way we the way things were and her response was not mean spirited but she said what she needed to say and in a respectful manner in a manner that everyone everybody knew yeah she's right so um i just i just um again i'm a fan of Meryl Streep that's not to discount anybody else so don't send me any nasty emails cuz quite frankly i'm not interested so there you go and um do you want me to do my historical figure? Yeah, please. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Now, I chose a historical figure. My person is alive. I didn't know whether they had to be dead, but they said making history. And so she's making waves and making history. Michelle Alexander is an American writer and civil rights activist. She's best known for her 2010 book, The New Jim Crow, Mass Incarceration in the Age of Color Blindness. She talks about something that we know to be absolutely true, and that is that Black people are put in prison at a higher rate than other races. And she talks about the impact of a felony conviction on... um, you know, people getting out of prison for the rest of their lives and how they're impacted by not being able to get a job, not to be able to attain stable housing. And so it's no wonder that they end up back in prison. So um, I tell you, she just did a masterful job. So she is making history and making a difference. Yeah, so I thought of the traditional, um, when I thought about the historical fig- figures, I thought about all of the, the ones that we know about, the yeah, you know yeah. Shirley Chisholm, Maya yeah. Angelou, Angela yeah. Davis, Sojourner Truth, all of them, Madam C.J. Walker, yeah. Rosa Parks, the list goes yeah, on and yeah, on and yeah. on. But I I decided to feature a celebrity, okay, and one that was in the news recently because I I didn't watch the Oscars, but apparently 
people felt that Angela Bassett's response to her not winning was a snub yeah. of the woman who won. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And who knows? Because we're not in her. We don't know I what was going her, on with yeah. her. So we yeah. can't we cannot say. But I chose Angela because she, she I felt I was excited about that one Oscar award because I was so sh- certain that she was going to win it. And it was really? because of her performance in Wakanda as as the queen. And mm-hmm. it was just empowering. I don't. Did you yeah. see it? Yeah, Wakanda? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. She, we didn't talk about it, so I didn't know if you've yeah, seen yeah, it. But yeah, yeah, so she was... And it's a good thing I did because you asked me on the show and then we get <laughs> nasty emails. But don't worry about old Lou. Go on. Yeah. <laughs> she was just phenomenal. I felt, I felt her power in that when she was in front of that, what look, appeared to be some kind of a Congress a group of other leaders and how and and st- and standing her standing ground for her for her country and that that performance was just amazing and i'm just going to say this and this might get us some letters but i also saw <laughs> the other movie um everything all at once oh you did and i, I did that. see that and but jamie I, I didn't Jamie even Lee remember Curtis. that Jamie Curtis was in it. Really? Like, yeah, I didn't see her. I don't remember her role in the movie. And, but, you know, so I was, I was disappointed because it was her, her role was forgettable where oh, Angela Bassett's yeah. wasn't, but Angela Bassett, I, I did know a little bit about her. She is, Highly, a highly respected and talented actress known for her dynamic and powerful performances performances on stage and on screen. She has been praised by both critics and audiences for her ability to bring depth and nuance to a wide range of roles from dramatic to comedic. Mm. Many people, including me, admire her poise, her grace, and her strength. Oh, and both, she's... Huh? She's beautiful. And she's beautiful and she's so fit. That's oh, the other thing that I yeah. love about her. Oh, yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. So in addition to her acting career, she's also known for her advocacy work, particularly in, in the areas of health and education. Did you know that about her? No, I didn't either until I, un, until I looked, looked it up. She is seen as a positive role model for women and people of color and her su- success has inspired many aspiring actors and artists. Yeah. Yeah, she's amazing. Um, she is amazing. She really should have won an Oscar for what's love got to do with it. What's love I got mean, to do it, with it? She she was absolutely robbed of that. That was crazy. Let yeah. me tell you something. I I you know back in the day, I I just was not into movies at all. But I went on a date to see that movie, mm-hmm. and and it was the first time. It was the first time that I went to the movies. I don't want to say it was in the hood, but it was in it was it was all black people mm-hmm. in the theater. Mm-hmm. And when I tell you I had never witnessed folks talking to the screen before, oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. It was so yeah. exciting. Oh yeah. I enjoyed it so much, but you know what? I had to see it again so I could hear all the words. <laughs> Right, right. But that right, performance yeah. was amazing. Oh my god. And, and I she think was, that might and have been... she was that was years ago and she was super fit then. Oh my gosh, even yeah. more so. Yeah. But I think that was my first time my first introduction to Angela Bassett was yeah. that movie. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 She is um she is wonderful. Yeah. She is. And I watched her was it her speech one time at the on the BET Awards when she was telling people, you know, believe in yourself. She's she's an amazing speaker. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. She's she, wow. she's um is she Harvard or or I think so. I think she's one of those. Yeah, she's or Harvard Yale. Juilliard or, or something. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yale, mm-hmm. but yeah, definitely yeah. I Ivy League school. Ivy League, yeah. Yeah. So all right. So, okay. Now, Teresa, can you share one woman who has helped <laughs> you weather a hard time in your life? Who okay. is that, Teresa? <laughs> it's, my, 
Okay, so there are many because you know it takes a minute. Do they have names? Let me tell you something. (laughs) Just be, just give me a second, okay? (laughs) So it used to be, honestly, before I, this is going to sound pretty silly, but it's true. And this is the first thought that came to my mind. And it's my mom. And as soon as I had a child, right? And I share everything with my mom. I mean, everything. But once I had a child and I dealt with those, you know, growing teenage years, growing up and even now, you know, I I taper. I don't share everything with my mom because I know how stressful for her it can be to hear bad things that are going on with me. And so it made me be becoming a mom made me realize that I just can't, I just can't tell her everything. So, um, so, but like I said, it takes a village and, um, I, I, right now, most of my burdens, I lay them on my good friend and partner. (laughs) (laughs) And I lay mine on you. That's what makes the magic work. That's what helps us. (laughs) <laughs> thank you so much. And thank you, my friend. It's a safe space. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah. And, yeah. um, yeah. I get that. You don't want to worry yeah. her. I, yeah. 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 Well, so. I tell you, I, I like you. I didn't have one woman, but I, I just have to say my, sisters and my sisters in laws because my sister in laws are like sisters to me. And um, you know, I just if something major happens, I run right to them because I know, okay, they're gonna give me their best take on things and they're they're gonna be supportive. So uh, I've just been blessed with good sisters who are like best friends and like I said, my um my brothers married amazing women who are like mine sisters and so and i call them sister you know so yeah, and i feel and that I way think about that's them. so amazing i i i yeah. love that i i really um i really think that's yeah amazing so um uh, you know i'm just i'm thankful for that very very thankful so okay so what's the next one Teresa? what is the one thing that can empower women you know, I, I looked at that. When you hear one thing, it's so much pressure to come up with one thing. But I really believe the way you become empowered by you become an empowered woman is being selective by how you by who you have in your circle, who's in your ear. Mm-hmm. Um, because if you you if you have people in your life in your inner circle that are in your ear, in your space, who believe in you, um, that you you grow into that. And it, it sort of takes over who you are because you believe it. And, um, but if you're having people that are putting limits on you and telling and subtly communicating to you that, you know, you're not capable or you need to defer to them or you don't know what you're talking about. That chips away at who you are. It chips away at your strength. So I just think being empowered, not that you are dependent on someone else's opinion, but it helps when you have people saying, yeah, yeah, good move. Wow, that was pretty. I believe in you. Oh, you did the darn thing. That 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 kind of support is critical, I think, to you walking in your fullness. I really do. That's just that's just me. Yeah, yeah and and I I couldn't. I I had trouble with just coming up with one thing too. But where I landed was education. Oh yeah. So when women are educated, uh, yeah, you know that just that you know we just have more access to information opportunities. We can yeah. make better informed decisions about our lives. You know, it helps us with our critical thinking, our confidence, and our self esteem. You know, so 
but I also thought what you were saying, I believe, is that we we need we need people to see us. So I thought we need to be. I, the other thought was we need to be seen and acknowledge yeah. as such, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know, but yeah, see. those that that was what education was my big one. But I I had a sub note about being seen and acknowledged, and yeah. also um, just when it comes to healthcare that we're treated, which we're treated equally, equal yeah. access to healthcare. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, those are big ones. They're huge. They are. They're huge. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah. And okay, is this what would make the future better for women? I, I think it's much of the same, right? So I, I said the same thing again with um, um, education, um, money economic empowerment yeah you know? yeah yeah. i said basically the same thing um just um making sure that we have equality that pay promotions abilities all of that um yep. develop programs to in- include um develop programs to encourage inclusion in different types of careers and spaces but um, I, I think that's essential. But one of the things I thought about when we talked about that governor's race in your home state in Georgia and Stacey Abrams and how the numbers split, if we would stop fighting amongst ourselves, if we would realize that we're stronger together, we would do much to move the ball forward in terms of women's rights. You know, um, you and I talked about uh, Roe versus Wade, and I saw something pop up on the screen before uh, we started the show where South Carolina is thinking about having um, the given life sentences for anyone getting an abortion. I didn't really read it, but my point is that we just see more and more of us losing our ability to have control over our lives. And if we continue to be, to focus on separate issues rather than saying, okay, can we find common ground? Um, We would be much, much more effective. So, yeah, because that, I don't know if you saw the, the numbers from that race and how they played out um, in the Georgia race, but yeah, they, the numbers showed that I think the largest voting block that actually turned the race was white females in Georgia. And um, there was a lot what, what, of- Did they say what was the, what was, what, why? I mean, Well, say- because I think what, what I heard a lot of the commentators talking, a uh, lot of the news folks talking about was just you know, you can say one thing publicly, but when you go in that booth, people had a hard time voting for a black woman. Oh, Even with all her credentials, certainly oh she was qualified. But they could vote for that Herschel Walker. And yeah, <laughs> so you know, so um, people just had a hard time, mm-hmm. and that's what I mean when we get to the point where we're so divided, we can't make good decisions. Because we're intent on, I have to have it my way, even if it's, you know, I have to, I want you to lose much. I mean, it's your losing is much more important to me than me actually doing the right thing. You know what I'm saying? Oh my gosh, that's a mouthful right there. I think that's what happened in Georgia in that race and people just have just having a a hard time with it even you know we're seeing some of that now with them talking about Biden getting ready to run and and will uh, Kamala the vice president be his running mate and people are saying having a a challenge with that so I think it's all of that so my point is if again if we would stop fighting amongst ourselves and look at the larger picture so Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. All righty. What is next? Okay. Um, 
current events. So that was, you didn't have any, did you have something on Chris? Well, let me tell you. Did you see Chris Rock's special? I outrage? did. Okay. Uh, a selective outrage. That, I tell you, that was something, you know? Something um, good or something bad? What's your opinion? Well, I'm going to tell you. First of all, I'm going to roll the tape back. When that incident happened, when that happened, when Will Smith, not an incident, when Will Smith slapped him at the Oscars, I told you, I was in the middle of reading his biography, Will Smith's biography, which I was thoroughly enjoying it. And when that happened, I was done. I mean, right. I was done because I was so afraid that we were going to have two black men on a national stage rolling around fighting. You know, that that was my fear. And I'm so thankful that Chris Rock kept his composure um, and that that didn't happen. So I I'm the in terms of his special, I thought he did a masterful job, but it was a little rough for him to uh, call Will Smith the B, the B word so much. And I thought it was a lot for um, him, you know, his attack on Jada to. To, to call her that as well might have went a bit too far, but um, considering what he has been through and suffered, um, I thought he did a masterful job um, with that special. Yeah, so what did you um, think? I, I enjoyed it. I think he could have done less of the B word and still been at it as effective. I think he could do, have used less of the N word. And oh, also, yeah, 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 yeah. Also, yeah. have been just yeah. as effective. Yeah. That was but, a lot. you know, it's that's what they do. It's comedy, right? And I also thought, I I mean, his jokes were funny. They were hilarious <laughs> to me. And they I were tell funny. You, he was on point the way he dissected all of that. You know, yeah. the bit that he did, like, who's been interviewed by, I was like, whoa, that's very true. So yeah. um, I thought that was a, that was a good special. And I love the title, Selective Outrage. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That was yeah. yeah that was good. Yeah, so. that was that was that was. But um I've since spoken to quite a few people about it and most recently, you know, my book club. Um, and it was kind of split down the middle. Like some yeah. people felt like he needed to just let it let it let it go. You know, just stop talking about it for Pete's sakes. Stop really? bringing it up. Someone slaps you like that. You're a public figure. It's impacted you. I mean, it really, and let it go. As a former social, social worker, I don't ascribe to that. Mm -mm. Yeah. Not in any way. So, and then that's, I, was I don't know if this, that's even healthy, but anyway, go on. <laughs> yeah. And then some others uh, felt like, you know, have, took issue with the fact that he got forty million dollars to do that episode. I, I I I applaud him. I like the way he handled that. That he refused to talk about it until he was paid. Bravo, bravo. Yeah. And if I'm that saying, makes him feel better, get, yeah. I, I would get up there for a little less than forty. <laughs> <laughs> you think? <laughs> but I mean, that was just that was just a horrible thing. So that he endured. So. I get what people are saying, let it go, but I he 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 didn't say anything all this time, you know. And he chose his moment. He's a comedian, so I didn't take issue with that. Like I said, I did take take issue, like you said, the N word that was too much and the B word and went in a lot on Jada. I just thought, okay, it was a lot. But yeah. But yeah, and I and I <laughs> See, the thing about it is, I guess we learned some backstory because he said it all started with her. You know, know. it's still I, all that piece of it really kind of didn't make sense to me. I know it just confused it, me as well. I'm yeah, like, really? Yeah. Because of that? But Teresa, yeah. when I tell you I was reading his book and it was so good. It was the kind of book that I don't even want to finish. It was just that good. But after that happened, I was like, okay, I'm not, I'm not reading Did that. Did you say it was wanna... an autobiography? Yeah. And I said, I don't want to see him in anything anytime soon, if ever. I'm just, I'm just not there. I just cannot. Because 
for the community. Like I said, I thought that was going to be the spectacle that we saw. Two men of their caliber and stature fighting like that. And I mean, not pretend like a movie, but I was, oh my Lord, my heart. I, it was just beating. I was so afraid. So, yeah. You know. And somebody, somebody said, okay, so if your mom says you're not to fight on TV, certainly she also told you not to call a woman the B word. Yeah. Well, to that, I say no disrespect to mom, but mom probably hadn't been slapped like that. So, yeah. yeah. I, I told you the story, my mom, you know, I probably got bad parenting, but when I was <laughs> bullied, when I was bullied in, uh, in middle school and thought I had a comrade in my mom and, you know, like most kids do and run home and tell her, she was looking at me like, oh, you're going to be fighting tomorrow because you better not come in here and tell me that. that I was so shocked to hear that story. That, that's the kind of bad parenting <laughs> I was raised with. And that's why every response doesn't begin with mom. No, I'm just kidding. Loved her dearly. Loved her. Yes, I <laughs> but yeah, did. Yeah, but seriously, that's what we dealt with. But anyway, okay. Teresa, other good, the big news. Okay. For our state, we elected the first female oh, state yeah. representative, yeah. Jennifer McClellan, yeah. previously state congressman. Uh, McC McClellan was a state senator. She now holds the seat previously held by U.S. Representative Donald McKeeshton. We wish Representative McClellan all the very best in her all role. All the best. Making history. We, yep. You know, currently in and making history. And uh, she right. has done a wonderful job thus far uh, in her legislative career. So I know she is going to do some great things. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited. That's about exciting. That. Yeah, yeah. So, but uh, Teresa, let me tell you, I heard, I saw something. I know you're going to be interested in it if you haven't seen it already. Okay. I saw recently on CNN that AI, artif artificial intelligence, detected breast cancer four years before it developed. Dr. Larry Norton, the medical director at the Lauder breast cancer at Sloan Kettering said that this technology has been around since 1990s, but it has improved so much that it can catch things that a human radiologist, you know, can't see, but it, it tells it, look at this more carefully. And it's called computer aided detection. Yeah. Did you hear about that? I did not, but I know about AI and I know yeah. the capabilities. Of AI. Wow, mm -hmm. I thought mm -hmm. this is great stuff. And they had some uh, images to show you on the mammogram how they could catch it. So yeah. I thought this is good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So AI can, can be really good and it can also be really bad. Yeah. But I'm going to stick with the good tonight. We're yeah. going to not go there, there go. on the bad. There you go. Okay. So yeah. I have a story. You know, we've talked a lot recently about folks and heart attacks. Yeah. So, a lot, um, Teresa. yeah, I've had, I've, I've recently heard of a story. Well, a really good friend of mine um, having um, some pro issues and deciding not to um, ignore them and going into the hospital, going to the hospital and catching some things ahead of time. Right. So this article that I, that I have, and somehow though, I cut the title off. Okay. So I can't remember what it was called, okay. but, uh, but the article is about not ignoring symptoms and especially when it comes to the heart. So, um, any, there, there are 10 heart symptoms that you should never ignore. Okay. Including nausea and chest ache and, and being tired upon waking. So if you wake up in the morning and you're okay. tired. That's not a good thing. Oh, I right? know that. Okay. Yeah. So um, a recent survey f uh, found 54% of adults wouldn't guess that these symptoms were related to poor health. The nausea, the chest ache, and tired upon waking, right? A cardiologist in a hospital in North uh, London listed other signs that could indicate your heart is in uh, less than tip-top condition, including heaviness in the arm upon exertion. 
shortness of breath walking upstairs, and frequent extra and missed heartbeats. So with that one, I was like, how do you know yeah. that you're missing a heartbeat? heartbeat. Right. Like, yeah. how do you know? Right. So because one thing I've been trying to pay close attention is my number of heartbeat beats per minute. Are you and using one- your Fitbit for that? Mm-hmm. I've got to start wearing my Fitbit. Itself. Yeah, and I and I you and I have the same when one. I go to the gym. Yes, that would be a good time to use it. Mm-hmm. But I'm saying you wear yours more than that. Oh yeah, because it the 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 statistics and the data. Although I'm super concerned about the fact that my data is <laughs> being collected in the manner that it is every second. But you keep I'm yours on least. all day. I keep it on all day I and I sleep with it at night. I got to start doing I that. take it off. Recently, I've only taken it off one night and that's Friday night into Saturday. I just um, wear it otherwise, I wear it because I it has helped me to sleep better and to sleep more um, because it tells you how many hours you're sleeping. It keeps track of how many hours you sleep at night and how well how much time you yeah. spend in each of the sleep cycles, right, right? right? And, and then you make adjustments according to where you're bad or good, right? So it has helped me to have more, have better sleep at night. And so I like it for that. And like I said, when I feel myself, literally I can be talking to somebody who stresses me out, whom I, I shall name, oh, sleep nameless, and my beats per minute, I can look at it and see that my stress level is going up. So you immediately start to breathe deep and just calm yourself and say, you know, this too shall pass. And it immediately, I can see that it's lowering. And the other thing I notice, I work from home every other week. I'm in a hybrid situation. My resting heart rate rate is is higher in the week that I work from the office. It's lower the week that I work, in it, and that's consistent because I've been now tracking this for a few months, several since November I think of last year, and that is it's a is very clear that my that's heart good. rate, my resting heart rate is lower from home and higher. And that's because of the hustle and bustle of getting ready and going into the office and just rushing to get everything, trying to get everything done. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm more consistent with my exercise and sleep on the week that I work from home. So it's important. Okay. It's important. So yeah, yeah, you should, you should charge it up and start, start using it. And I told you that there, there are, there have been reports from the, um, the Apple watch. Um, people have noticed things about their heart and gone to the hospital and, yeah, yeah, and has saved that. their lives. Yeah. yeah I've heard so that. yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's my, the Fitbit doesn't have that kind of yeah. capability. The, the iWatch yeah, or right. whatever it's called. I Apple yeah. iWatch, whatever it's called. Um, it has more features than, than does the, I, I, um, the Fitbit. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, right. I want to get to the, some of these, uh, there's a list of symptoms. I'm just going to go down to the, bo- to the bottom 10 health, heart health symptoms that you should never, ever ignore dizziness on standing up quickly. You know, how many times has that happened? Right? Like it, I, I've had that happen to me, right. but who right. knew shortness of breath, Difficulty bending down, palpitations, tightness of the chest, arm pain, often on the left, difficulty standing up, chest uh, discomfort, excluding tightness. So just uncomfortable chest. Right, Swollen right. legs. Yeah. Frequent extra and skipped heartbeats. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the next current event I have is see, good news. Good news. Yeah, we're on to good news. This now. is good news. The men swimming. Did you hear about this? 
and dive team at Howard <laughs> University won the 2023 uh-huh. Northeast Conference Championship. Yep, this was yep, yep. Howard's first title in more than 30 years. Yep. So, 34 so years. You know how I know? Because that's my story, too. <laughs> oh, is it really? <laughs> So, <laughs> Teresa, I thought this would be a great time for me to sort of plug a recent blog. Okay, okay. swimming is a predominantly white sport. And, you know, I wrote a blog recently about the benefits of swimming, where I talk mm-hmm. about the origins of our fear of swimming in our community. So I'm going to share just a bit of an excerpt from that. Okay? And folks okay. can find the full blog at uh, Um Although most early slaves in America did learn to swim, slave owners soon began to gradually recognize swimming as a means of escape for slaves, as it was extremely hard to track a slave who escaped by water and the runaway left no trail. In addition, slave owners began to view their slaves swimming as dangerous because it could result in loss of property due to drowning. Therefore, slave owners began to force slaves to to stop swimming through a variety of tactics. For example, some slave owners told stories of sea creatures and monsters to scare the slaves, All of these factors over the years culminated into a fear of water amongst the black community in America. It also began the stereotype that blacks simply don't swim, eventually changing black culture. After a few generations, fewer and fewer slaves learned to swim and more and more slaves became afraid of the water. And that quote was taken from TeamUnified.com. According to a 2017 study commissioned by the USA Swimming Foundation and done by researchers at the University of Memphis, 64% of black children in the United States can't swim. And they are almost six times more likely to drown in a swimming pool than white children. I said in that blog that I believe that we can do better. Howard has shown that we absolutely can by not only swimming, but excelling at swimming and diving. Bravo. Our congratulations to the swim and dive team at Howard University. And that's some good stuff. Yeah, that is good stuff. The coach was also quoted as saying, don't count the laps, make the laps count. Wow, really? Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I and the new story that. that I read. Mm-hmm. I love that. So I love it, that too. And it was yeah. it's it's just so good to see that. Oh, you know? absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So and that's mm-hmm. another case of, you know, not believing what you can't do. We can do it. So we can do it. So, we can do it. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Teresa, you got anything else for today? Any any news? Anything going on? Well, you know that was that was the good news that I was going to share, and I thought I was going to be doing something because I know how much you love to swim, <laughs> <laughs> and I just should have no, known you listen, had that story. Don't, don't don't try to make the people think I can swim. I only started back swimming a few months ago, but. I started back. Yeah, but I told you I started because the last time I got in the water before that, I was fearful of the deep end. And I said, no, 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 not having that. I'm not not doing that. So I forced myself to swim. So that I minimizing it. You swim every week. I swim two days a week, every week. And, uh, you know, and it's just because, well, it's good for you, but it it is so relaxing. So uh, I'm enjoying it. And uh, so, yeah. But, um, Teresa, our next show is Saturday, March 25th at 9 a.m. Folks, Teresa thought it was 8. It's not. She doesn't even know the time (laughs) of our own show. It's a 30-minute show. So please plan to join us on Saturday, March 25th at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. 
And our next regular show is Tuesday, April 11th at 8 p.m. Yes, and we are working on a guest, and uh, you will hear more about that. But uh, we are excited about that. And again, we also do a weekly blog, which is published on our website every Tuesday. So I read a bit of an excerpt of one that was that I did recently. Teresa writes some wonderful blogs. Usually hers are about health, full with great information. So check out our blogs at earringsoff.com. Don't sleep on them. They are a quick read and they cover a lot of great topics to make sure we keep you informed so that you ha- you're armed with information to make the best decisions to improve your quality of life. Yeah, absolutely. And we invite you to share your thoughts on tonight's episode. Send us a quick email. We would love to hear from you to earringsoff at gmail.com. And also, folks, please, if you would, don't forget to subscribe to Earrings Off. And we'd like you to do uh, to rate us on, on Apple, to, to go on and review us. We appreciate that um, as we are t- doing our best to get the word out about Earrings Off. So, uh, again, thank you so very much for joining us. Have a good evening. And stay safe and take good care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.